We've uh, just released a paper today in the Journal of Wildlife Management, which summarizes 110 years of incidents of fatal attacks of black bears on people. And while it sounds horrid, fortunately they're extremely rare events, and, and they are horrid. But the events have a pattern that's distinct enough that people can recognize them and oftentimes avoid them if they understand what's going on. Basically, we found that uh, during the past decade, about two people a year are killed by black bears, and that uh, the incidents are distinct in, in their character. They're easy to recognize if you know what you're looking for. A typical bear, when it's excited or aggressive, makes a lot of noise, <laughs> or swats the ground, or does things to draw attention to it, say, look, I'm a threat. But the, uh, the bears that occasionally kill people are ones that do it very stealthily, much like you would expect a predator to do. They get close to a person and then they charge, usually without making any noise. And of course, most people haven't seen this kind of behavior because it's very rare. We have perhaps 750,000, 800,000 black bears in North America. And the fact that they kill two people a year, is it's really testimony to how benign they are for the most part. But obviously, if you're, you or one of your loved ones is one of those t two people, then that's two too many. So we think uh, people can recognize these patterns of behavior and do something to, to deter them. What do you look for? One thing you don't look for is the female black bear defending her cubs. She may act very aggressively. And indeed, she's trying to tell you, get away, I need distance, you're too close. She makes a lot of noise. She looks like she's really aggressive. The bears who are really going to get you in serious trouble are ones that follow you and don't make noise, just like I said. So it's a very, uh, very interesting differences in what you might expect and patterns of behavior. What kind of people get attacked? Well, the data are very, very clear that it's people who are by themselves or only have one companion. So small groups seem to be more vulnerable. What kind of bears uh, are involved in fatal attacks? It's largely male black bears that are uh, looking for a meal. They may be starving. They may not. Both types uh, fit in there. But the main thing is that these serious attacks are mainly predatory, and they're mainly done by male black bears. A surprising finding. We looked for factors that might, uh, might indicate uh, or follow the changes in, in the number of fatal attacks by black bears. First thing we found was that over 85% of the fatal attacks have occurred since 1960. So are the bears changing their behavior? Are people changing their behavior or what or both? And the only strong correlation that we find is with the uh, is I'll start I'll start this one again. The only strong correlation we find is with increases in the human population. So there's almost a perfect linear relationship between the number of fatal bear attacks and increases in the human population. We think this suggests that what's happening is as there are more and more people both recreationally and commercially in the woods with more and more activity, they tend to, uh, to run into black bears. And the bears that are most involved in these kind of incidents are ones in rural areas in Canada or Alaska. There's a lot of black bears in the lower 48, but they don't seem to be so involved. So it may have to do with early exposures of black bear populations to human beings and a few individual bears that, uh, that try to uh, go after people. All this emphasis on, uh, on, on bear attacks shouldn't uh, in any way detract from the fact that black bears are a lovely species to get along with. They're generally very, very safe to be around, uh, much safer than dogs in terms of total number of injuries. 
much safer than snakes and bees and other species like that. And they're also fascinating to watch and to understand their behavior. The fact that the odd one uh, gets involved in a, in a serious attack on a human being is unfortunate, but it, like I said, it is something that we can manage and I think live with. What are some of those, I guess, the management uh, implications of these findings as far as, you know, man park managers, people out in the uh, wilderness areas using them, that sort of thing? There are management implications to these findings. One is once a bear has crossed this threshold and participated in this kind of attack, they do seem to be more likely to try it again. So clearly any bear that has attacked and killed a person is one that should be removed from the population. Occasionally bears involved in this kind of incident yield types of behaviors that allow us to predict that they might go on and do more serious things like attempting to kill and eat people. And those kind, of, uh, those kind of behaviors are ones where they become increasingly more aggressive around people. They might uh, get a little bit of food and garbage, but then the next time they chase people away from a picnic table or they start tearing into tents. And while that isn't what the majority of the fatal attacks are about, there's a significant minority that are about bears becoming increasingly aggressive. So wildlife managers have to watch out for male bears that uh, may be becoming increasingly aggressive or male bears that are really sick, injured, because they are uh, significantly represented in the uh, attacking bear population too. The way we did this research was, it be, really began with years of trying to understand the behavior of black bears in a much broader context. And also trying to understand why, where, and how many bears injured people. So this is part of a much broader study of bear ecology and behavior. But as, as we got further into it, we began to realize there were some very interesting things in the accumulated data. And the accumulated data were records that ranged from coroner's reports to investigations by Fish and Wildlife Agency. Basically, all of the Fish and Wildlife Agencies in North America were partners in this research because they provided the data that we worked with. So it's a, a combination of 110 years of keeping records and trying to milk those records for patterns that you never would see in just uh, a decade. We had 110 years of data and some interesting things that we thought were worth sharing with the bear managers of North America so they could make more informed decisions.